Hey everybody, welcome. If you're one of my longtime followers, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome for the first time. So um, my nickname is Dag, and my biggest hobby is radio control aircraft, radio control aircraft that are ginormous and electric. But I also am building an ultralight, and this one is about so far what has my ultralight cost. So I know some of you RC people get frustrated when I talk about my ultralight, but aviation's my life, and if you don't like it, you can turn off the video right now, but I hope you hang around. So basically what we're gonna talk about is my air bike, which is a part 103 uh, under the FAA ultralight, as long as I keep it under 254 pounds. On the right are some specs that I borrowed from um, Jordan Lakes Aero, and look, I've communicated with them. They don't mind me showing plans and drawings and all the different things about the build of my air bike. I've had a couple of people reach out saying, how dare you show the drawings uh, that you paid money for. I've emailed them and had conversations and they hope that I encourage other people to build an air bike from watching, okay? So on the right is the specs. I'm not gonna go through all of it, but basically it's a single seat ultralight which all ultralights, if they're gonna be part 103, have to be single seat. The moment you make it a two seat, you have to have your pilot license to fly another person with you, okay? So if it's a two seat plane, technically it's not, an, even if it's 254 pounds or less, um, it can't be flown as a ultralight, okay? Now, if you go to their website, they have, uh, basically everything you want on the air bike they've got the plans which are 150 bucks and i think they're back to building the um the kits again where you actually buy like the fuselage already framed or you can buy the wings already framed up um i'm sorry the fuselage already welded up and the wings already framed up i think they've gone back to doing that again which is really exciting so you can actually buy um the air bike kit instead of just buying plans to build from. So when you basically build from plans, um, you're going to get a whole bunch of drawings and you're gonna have to basically figure out how you're gonna do this. But this is a, this video is specific to talk about how much money I've spent to date and how much money, more money I think I'm gonna spend. So when you build the fuselage, um, a lot of people don't realize that you are going to have to build a jig to hold thing in play, things in place, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But when you see a fuselage, you're not just buying the 4130 chromoly here. If you don't own a TIG welder, you're going to have to get a TIG welder. Okay, and I'm going to talk in a minute a little bit about the difference between TIG welding and some of the people I know that, that have MIG welded this. Um, and I'm not going to try to tell you which one you should do. It depends on your... Um, your skills, okay? Um, I also, real quick, wanna do a shout out to one of my sponsors, it's RTL Fasteners. If you need bl bolts, nuts, blind nuts, uh, screws, servo screws, any of that stuff for the hobby, they're probably gonna have it. Um, if you go to the website and spend more than $25, use uh, code DAG25, you'll get 25% off that order. So spend more than 25 and you'll get a 25% discount if you use the code. But, you know, I've had a lot of people look at the fuselage when I'd first gotten it painted, and that's what you're seeing here. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, an awful lot of work went into getting the fuselage to this point, okay? So we're going to talk about money today, but you also need to think about the time, how many hours. And I'm going to do another video on basically when I'm done with this on how many hours I had in the whole project, because I don't... I keep notes on all of this, like a log, but I don't know how many hours I actually had in the fuselage. I, I'm i guessing I had about 90 hours actually in the fuselage, which sounds low to me. Um, but you can do an awful lot in two um, five-day weeks, eight hours a day. So that might be right, but I need to look into that. Um, the fuselage is just like a something you just got to be very meticulous about. It's not that hard. You just have to be meticulous and, t and take your time. The wing is the same thing. The amount of hours and patience and time 
and you're also going to have to be kind of um, you're going to have to have some skills to understand the wood you're going to use because in the plans it tells you to use Sitka or a Douglas fir or a yellow, yellow pine, uh, southern yellow, yellow pine on different pieces of wood in the airplane. I've built so many airframes in my life that I know a couple of places I could cheat a little bit, but I also use carbon fiber toe to reinforce it. So it actually become probably a hundred times stronger than it needed to be. But I want you to keep in mind though, every time you're buying carbon fiber toe or you're buying um, different parts and pieces, it's going to add up. Okay. When you, when you really think about the, when you really think about buying the drawings for 150 bucks, okay, from Jordan Lake Arrow, and you start dissecting them and you start understanding them, you can kind of start a bill of material. But I want to warn you that bill of material is going to blow up over the life of the project. Because when I first started this, I thought I could build the entire, by the engine, by the muffler, by the propeller, by all my 41 chrome molly steel and all of my wood and be in that $7,000 range. And in a minute, I'll, I'll tell you that I'm not even close to 7,000 on this. I'm a lot over that. Now you look at these spars here, the front and rear spar, building this table that holds it. You gotta remember, you're gonna spend some money on, on the things that you're gonna build this on. The table that you're gonna build your wing on. If you don't have a big table, you're gonna build a table. Um, and nowadays wood is like almost the price of silver. It's crazy what wood costs. Um, building the apparatus that's gonna hold the fuselage together for you to weld it straight is gonna cost you money. Um, to me, this was one of the things, luckily I drew all of this in 3D in Fusion 360, which did add a lot of hours to this, but it helped me, it helped me see that I could basically keep everything within a 16th of an inch. Uh, and that was the target was eighth to a 16th of an inch accuracy on everything on this fuselage. And you know, you can see there, I've got my laser on it and I don't know if this is going to be one of the straightest air bike fuselages built or not, because all the ones I look at look pretty straight, but now we're going to talk about some cost. And right now I have $9,850 and 10 cents in the build. That does not include my welder which was about 850 bucks from Eastwood. That does not include, um, oh, it does include the argon. It does include the filler rod. Um, and on the left, you can pretty much see my little spreadsheet. Um, and then I break it down into groups on the right here. But the plans were 150. My motor was 2798 from Jaybird. And it's a Kawasaki 340 um, with the belt drive um, one to two point six something ratio. I can't remember what it is. I should know that. Um, the muffler I did, if you watch my videos, I TIG welded up my own muffler and I have about $178.21 of metal and the adapter, the vibration adapter thing. Uh, my prop cost me 850 bucks. And look, I would beg you to really consider always thinking on an ultralight about a ground adjustable pitch prop. I've learned so much in the testing of my 340 to get into the true power band. No, I shouldn't say power band, but that, that, that engine produces its full horsepower at 6,800 RPM. I'm setting mine up to be at about 6,500 RPM on the ground statically because I know in the air it's going to unload a little bit and the RPMs will go up a, you know, a couple of hundred, maybe two or three hundred. But when I first was testing that engine, I had no idea how much pitch or how least how high or how, how low a pitch I would need on that prop to hit that 6,500 RPM knowing it's going to unload to about 68 in the air. Um, if you really, really know what that engine is going to do with your muffler, your muffler is going to change how your, your power works. One of the thing on the engine is I have a cylinder head temp gauge and I have an exhaust uh, uh, temperature gauge. Those things are the things you want to watch to make sure you're not going to overheat that engine and melt that aluminum piston. So you kind of know if your engine's 
at the right power band, or, or I shouldn't say power band because it's not a tuned pipe on it, but you, that you're at the right horsepower at full throttle by what your exhaust gas temperature, your cylinder head temperature, and your RPM is. So, um, yeah, that's all I want to talk about that. The 4130 chromoly steel I bought in a whole bunch of different orders at AED on the left is a steel supplier here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, the other stuff I picked up as I needed it for my aircraft spruce because I bought it in a quantity at first because I just wanted to build a fuselage. I didn't want to build the tail feathers and I didn't want to build the landing gear and all that. At first, I just wanted to build a fuselage. So um, the 4130 and also that 20, uh, 2,629 for the 4130 is high because I still have quite a bit of chromoly left over. I shouldn't say quite a bit. I would, I would say in the aircraft is 20... $200 to $2,300 worth of uh, 4130. Uh, the aluminum uh, sounds high, but my fuel tank, I take well to my own fuel tank, and aluminum is stupid expensive. Um, the wood here is all of the different woods I mentioned earlier, but it all includes, it also includes the wood for the jig uh, that help, sets up my wing, my spars, and my fuselage. Um, the wire switches and battery is pretty self explanatory. Uh, I have a $125 um, lithium battery in the airplane. Uh, I have a voltage regulator. I have my switches and my wire and all that junk. The wheels I picked up off of eBay. Um, actually, a guy sells them and says they're for ultralight. They kind of look like wheelbarrow um, tires and rims. But be warned, the air bike has, I think it's a 5 8 inch axle or a 3 quarter inch axle. I can't remember what it is. And the bearings that come in those ultralight wheels you buy from eBay are not the right inner diameter. So you're going to be replacing the bearings in there. Um, that's part of that miscellaneous number at the bottom. Uh, instruments got $403. I have an altimeter, a tachometer, the exhaust temperature, and the cylinder head temp. And got that from a place called Leading Edge Airfoil. It's an ultralight um, um, instrument company. They have all the kind of stuff for ultralights. Uh, the bolts and nuts are all the AN type bolts that I needed for the air, for airplane, you know, to hold on the wings, to do uh, the hard points and all the different parts of the airplane here. Sorry, I'm reaching in here for a treat because I got my Bernice Mountain Dog here trying to climb up on my lap. You can see his tail in the video. Um, <laughs> uh, the paint is actually wrong. I don't know why my spreadsheet showed that. It should be about $285 because I'm using... Um, can't remember the name of the company, but it's the water-based epoxy, and it worked perfect. Everybody else said they hate it, and I absolutely love the stuff, but that was just the primer uh, number. I should have fixed that. Uh, miscellaneous, believe it or not, includes um, cotter pins, uh, clevis pins, turnbuckles, all kinds of different things, um, aircraft cable for the flying wires on the tail, so, uh, that miscellaneous includes an awful lot of stuff. Um, the rubber hard mounts for my muffler. Uh, and then I got argon in there, which is the gas that I use to weld with. So I'm at 98.50.10 right now. I believe I have another $1,400 in fabric for my wings and the final paint. Um, because I'm done buying wood. All my wood is cut, everybody. I am so close to the finish line on this airplane, it's insane. So um, I bought the TIG 200 from Eastwood, I think is 850 bucks. And, um, oh, about welding now. This is where I want to dive into this for a minute. Um, I, I, I try really careful how I explain this kind of stuff to people because people watch my videos and think, oh, okay, if Dag says to do it, I should do it. There are several air bikes out there that had hard landings or were just flying along and where the, the um, 4130 comes up to the main mount that connects your, to your wings, the weld snapped loose and the person's, luckily, luckily the fuselage didn't come apart on them because if that fuselage come apart at that top, your wing falls off the airplane and you're dead. Um, so they put some little gussets up there to kind of correct this. I've talked to a couple of people that are like, I hate to use the word expert welder, but these are like friends that do exotic metals and weld for NASCAR and NASA. And they've looked at a bunch of these welds that people will do and they like to use MIG and they're doing really cold welds. 
because with MIG welding, if you aren't careful, when you start to pull up that weld and start, you can burn through the thin wall 4130 chromoly, and what you do is you go to your machine and start turning it down, and it's a temperature. So you end up with cold welds. With TIG welding, when you take your time and you look at it, you can really see what's going on. Now, I know with MIG welding, you, you can do that, but if you're a novice buying a MIG welder or a novice buying a TIG welder, I would say go find somebody who owns both machines and let them let you experiment with it and get good and then have somebody check your welds because I had somebody look at a lot of my welds and they said my welds were good to go. Now, if this plane falls apart in the sky, then my wife's going to have to chase them down and say, why did you lie? I'm kidding. My plane's not going to fall apart at the welds. I know that for sure. But when it comes to welding this airplane, you are welding the airframe that's going to keep your ass alive in the air. So make sure you know how to weld. And if you are going to MIG weld it, make sure you know how to do good welds where you're going to build up that weld and you're just not welding on the surface of the 4130 that you're actually getting some molten um, metal mixing in there and uh, getting a good weld. Okay. So um, that's it, everybody. This is a nice short little video. Uh, the cost of the airplane I think when it's going to be done, it's going to be like right at $12,000 or $12,200. And some people would say, can you build it cheaper? Absolutely, you can build it for less money. You could go out and find a used ultralight engine. Okay, uh, there are some out there that people have been picking up for about a thousand bucks. That's going to save you a bunch of money. You could go to a fixed pitch wood prop. It's going to save you three or four hundred dollars right there. You could probably find chrome, uh, the 4130 chromoly less expensive if you really want to search around the country and find somebody that if you go to pick it up. One of the hardest things about chromoly is getting it shipped. Shipping is just obscene in this country. So um, that's the reason my initial order in bulk was local here in Indianapolis because I could go pick it up in my trailer. But unless I was doing another bulk order, I just couldn't get the pricing down. So it become cheaper to go to Aircraft Spruce and pay for the shipping, which seems like it doesn't make sense, but that's the way it worked. Because um, I know there's people out there saying you can build this airplane for nine grand or eight grand. Um, I saw one person say they could build it for six grand. Um, I'm not sure how you could build it for six grand. Um, but, you know, there's there's just all you know there's just different ways people are going to build this airplane so and i'm just giving you my opinion here folks i'm not saying that i did a study to say you couldn't build it for six grand but mine's going to be about twelve thousand two hundred ish i'm guessing when it's finally done and uh it's taken me three years so while it's a chunk of money it's not like i spent twelve thousand two hundred at once because i could never afford to do that okay and if you follow my hobbies, you know I haven't done any big extraordinary uh, projects that normally cost me five or six thousand dollars. So um, yeah, that's it, everybody. So you know I always end these videos uh, talking about kids and aviation, and you know I've gotten quite a few haters coming out saying, you know, Damon, you're wasting your time trying to get kids into aviation. You need to be going after the late 20 early 30s because these are the people that you know got married and they don't like their wife already and they're moving on with life and getting bored and they've got money they don't know where to spend so they either go to golf or strip joints and then they you know blow their money let's get them into the hobby i'm serious i've had people basically say that to me um i think that's rubbish with all respect to the people who think that you know um and people would say, well, parents don't have time to take kids to the airfield. Well, they got time to take the kids to soccer, to football, to hockey, to all these other things. They've got time to take them to the airfield. They say parents don't have enough money to spend on model aviation for a kid who's 10 years old. That's rubbish. Look at all the money spent on video games and iPhones and all the junk that the kids are getting nowadays. I mean, you can get little park flyer trainer type planes for less than 300 bucks. So I, I just, I don't believe all of the excuses that are made of not getting kids into aviation. But think about the path that aviation can take a kid. If they really fall in love with it, they can become engineers, they can get involved with all kinds of cool things in life. Okay, Burt Rutan, a lot of, uh, Hoot Gibson, a lot of people who are well-known aviators in life started with model airplanes. Okay, 
So that's it, everybody. Have an awesome day. Thanks for uh, watching my videos. Please like uh, my videos and please follow me because I'm trying to build my uh, YouTube and use the proceeds to this of this channel to pay for my hobby and my airplanes and stuff. So basically sponsorship, my Patreon, and my YouTube is how I'm trying to pay for all this. I'll see you all next time. Be safe. Take a kid flying. See you next time. Bye.